Good morning all. Another sleepless night. Two days in a row. Not two days. Twice in a week. I decided to go for a walk early in the morning with Kalele, who's out there. So, let's see, I just want to make, um, I want to make two commentaries. One on the video I just posted uh, about the kid with um, the man that with a uh, skin problem, the skin uh, um, disease that he was born with. And then I wanted to add um, a comment to the my little rant about police brutality and Vanessa Marquez. I think I, I wanted to apologize for rambling on and uh, not condensing and probably missing this, you know, making a missing an opportunity to make a more concise point such a interesting day today it's foggy and I was gonna walk you guys up to the edge over there so you could see the fog lingering but first I wanted to show another a little update on this ramp another uh, well-spent <laughs> chunk of budget money for for one of the world's municipalities this is supposed to be a handicap ramp that doesn't really change levels much right i still don't get it i mean it's nothing that you can't just kind of walk over from here <laughs> you know do you did you need a ramp to to uh i i don't know and so this is an interesting little thing that i still can't figure out what they're going to be doing here. Okay, so I'll make it quick, um, as I always say, and I never do. My point about the police department, the judicial system, and the kid that was beat up for buying a cigarette off the street is that basically we have a target mentality. We uh, go after citizens and, and try to, you know, uh, apprehend a certain number of, of transgressors and uh, this whole thing as if our country was a video game. And there's no plan to, uh, for example, deal in this case with a problem that is selling clandestine cigarettes on the street. I mean, they don't go after specific problems in society. If they really wanted to eradicate meth, for example, well, you would mount uh, a study and analysis, infiltration, operation, find out where the kitchens are, get rid of the production in the cities, not go after targets that are carrying selling amounts or are buying and I mean it's almost like the system has adapted to keeping its employees the police department and the whole judicial mechanism employed <laughs> so the, the the manner of operation has a, has morphed into a system that is basically constructed around maintaining jobs and numbers, instances of apprehensions, and number of court cases, and it's almost like using the citizenship to be able to have the system function. It's really not trying to eradicate the problems from our society and solve the problems in our society, which is what it's supposed to be. A judicial system should be about understanding the changing world and what our citizens suffer at the hands of our the design of our civilization and you know have bring consci conscientiousness 
and uh, but really focus on building the morale, the self, the respect, the self-respect, and the respect for others, and the civil participation. Um, people talk about how societies that have a lot of crime and drug use have problems have a lot of psychological issues uh, in their people and a lack of fathers in the family and um, you know have to do more with drug use and uh, you know the the crimes that are committed and so those should be the targets quote unquote not the people the people are trying to deal with life but you know i don't know i don't think this is that, that sophisticated but in any case if you watch the vanessa marquez vi video uh you see it you you can you can almost transport yourself into that little that apartment that little girl's situation because she is a little girl she's a tiny little it's unbelievable you know these guys go in there with with bazookas and 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 high high precision firing, you know, laser beam target finders. What the hell? Uh, why do we why do we have a language? What what do we what are we able to speak for as as living beings? If we we need these weapons to to get somebody to go present themselves at mental care, at mental health? Uh, you know, something is very strange. And uh, so, yeah, we're not... The case of the 14-year-old, again, they, they beat up a child who needs actually maturing and a, a better relationship at uh with his parents, more respect towards his parents and society, probably. I mean, this is a quality of our culture. We act like we don't respect anything. We, we ah, you know, we're basically spoiled brats as people. We, we have maturity uh, and respect issues. We're insolent with each other, we, you know. But these are the basic problems. These... <laughs> Uh, you can't, if you, if you have, you know, it's, it's almost like saying putting all your energy in, in, in developing the perfect fly swatters and, uh, you know, and, and, and employing people to operate them and creating schedules to operate these fly swatters when all you would have to do is maybe get rid of a leak that's creating a puddle where the stagnant water is bringing flies. So if you just fix the, the, the source problem, which is the stagnant water, there wouldn't be no more flies. There wouldn't be any need for fly swatters. That's kind of a good metaphor for uh, what is happening in America, uh, resulting in 2,300,000 people, half of which are probably excessive, excessively brutally sentenced. Or, you know, I mean, there's so many things to talk about. Why does this subject not interest us? We have been hanging, punishing, incarcerating people uh, since the beginning of civilization. For what purpose? <laughs> to make society better, right? Um, society doesn't get better. <laughs> society is not getting better. We, we continue to give uh, death... Uh, give the death penalty, put people in, try to, and, and we talk about making a lesson out of people, and so if we give them 70 years, people will learn that that's a serious crime. We have been doing this forever, and it seems that every day we get ballsier. People, spree shoot, what do you call them? Serial killers, not spree shooters. These people that grab, um, go to a shopping mall and kill everybody now it's almost like we it happens every month we don't even care you know we just keep getting worse so obviously punishment does not work for for human civilization punishment creating prisons cages for people does not 
help and does not better our society. Well, that should be a pretty, pretty loud uh, signal that says maybe we need to work on understanding society and fixing the problems that cause our people to grow, be raised a certain way, believe certain things, uh, have these problems, these issues, these reasons for why they take it out on society or, you know, get to why it is happening. <laughs> okay, and what was the other one? The other one was... Um, oh, boy. Um, what was it? The Vanessa Marquez one. Oh yeah, the the kid, um, the guy. It was such a strange. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but it's the last one I posted. It's such a strange documentary. The one before of the guy that lost both legs and his arm was also a little. You know, these these uh, documentary makers. Some probably feel that they don't want to get too melodramatic and too heavy, too emotional. But the second one, the, the it was such an enormous discrepancy uh, between, I mean, this, this, this poor man, you know, they had to peel bandages off, I don't know how regularly, they don't show too much of that, because the truth is that he lived a nightmare, this poor man was condemned to live torture <laughs> he was born his skin didn't stick on to didn't stay on and so he he was always in sores and band-aids and and i w i was just thinking jesus why don't they just make a special room so he can be naked all day and not have to tear band-aids uh, bandages off every week or however often they had to do it and uh, you know they don't show that till the end you don't really see the reality of it because they make it all about his amazing personality you know these people that suffer such tragic physical tragedies um they seem to only they, they they find these escapes sometimes it doesn't it happens rarely it doesn't happen normally and so they make these documentaries about the person's character which is uh to learn from to look at what this person's attitude and learn from it right um i don't want to be cynical but some it, it's easier to find such strength when something like this happens and somebody that doesn't have anything to bounce off, to, to push off from uh, and, 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 and rise in life, you know? It, when you're, it's not so easy to draw uh, that lesson and apply it unless you have no other recourse, I'm, I'm trying to say. But um, I don't know what your belief is in uh re religious belief is but the way i would say it is if you are somebody who who uh has 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 realized that um creators exist that god god in heaven which is creators uh of our existence um or masters of our existence, lords of our existence. I say plural because I feel that um, that they're living beings, and all living forms that we know of are collectives. It, it can't be a bearded man sitting by himself on a planet like the little prince, right? Or or a living being of any of whatever kind you imagine by himself. He probably has. They are many, I'm sure, so I, I say plural. But in any case, um, you know, people, I, I, made, I put that question on the video asking, what do you believe? I want you to say God, but, you know, people, when you say God, people think the, the Bible and everything that the Bible says. You know, it's very hard to... Uh, or you have atheists who who 
who basically are based on um, on on sort of uh, belittling or 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 yeah belittling um, not ridiculing but you know they feel that uh, the Bi the story of the Bible is absurd it makes no sense people believe these these things Adam they think it's Adam and Eve and the apple and the serpent and so they they base their atheism on that and um, I've never really met people who who are neither are e neither of these two who simply figure out that yeah uh, a few things prove to me that there is uh, a much much more greater more capable um, conscious intelligence that has made this happen that this is the way it is because of them or you know um, and so that's why I mean if, if well, that's what I mean by if you have look at Kalilis digging <laughs> digging what you trying to find and under the playground house um, <laughs> I want to show the, the fog. So, considering this belief, what do you, cons you know, um, think they would want, or for what reason, you know, what do you expect? Because creators, if creators, or a, let's just summarize it by saying God made the world, he must want something from it. Right? You just don't... Nothing happens in the universe for no reason. There's something that is sought. Yeah, everything... <laughs> is sought. Some way, in, by some form of this, of wish, intent, desire, or, or will. Uh, force. Even a force wants something, right? So... without being too specific you can ask yourself what would they or what would god what does he want from us what, what would he what would he like to see or what does he expect i doubt that he it's just a play that he wants to see how the little puppets perform and they're knowing what they're gonna do uh you know i'm sure there uh, is an unknown factor to to challenge to keep it open even for them right because we are interested in designing life artificial intelligence you know stuff that makes itself happen that can perform by its by itself because it opens up the possibility of being a creator so imagine an intelligence that is much you know thousands of times more capable than we are um, just that much more is their enjoyment or their purpose for an element of seeing how it unfolds seeing how the world how we unfold or how we make the world what we do with what we are capable of doing or what we possess as far as ability or capacity um, so what, what do you think that was, this is what the question was for that video. What do you think they would want from us? And a religious person, classically traditional religious person might say, well, that we have compassion and that we care for one another, right? Because that guy, um, needed so much care and compassion and help and patience uh, but if we own our own destiny and really take care of I mean what's the first thing in in a documentary actually they they t they asked the mother would you basically she agrees with what seems to be the common sense would you would you have known that this he was going to be born with this skin problem would you have aborted? And she said, yes, of course. 
who would want to have somebody live being tortured every day with something because he's not like in a state in a chair where you don't even you can't really affirm for sure that their state of perception their conscience con their their state of consciousness is one where they would suffer the same way that you would suffer if you were trapped in their body let's say for example although it doesn't look comfortable ever no matter how removed they seem to be um, but it, I mean it breaks my heart like the, 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 the I posted the night before about the twin brothers and the brother that dedicated himself so these uh, them himself to uh, the, the his twin brother that was born with uh, c cerebral several uh, several palsy I can't pronounce it but you know these these diseases that affect development and so the three the three documentaries are different um, one is the twins his twin brother was born that way and so it's all about rising to the occasion they didn't know um no yeah they did know but they it was if they had to um try to remove the twin brother that was ill that had the disease there was a risk of killing the healthy one so in order to have the healthy one they went ahead and had the one that had the, the disease problem this is the one i posted tonight before and so that that documentary was about the family and the brother the brother that um dedicated his life to you know holding him and you know catering to his every need and you know picking him up and making him dance when it was time to dance at the at the wedding party and all that uh the second one which is the kid that had a he got drunk and he got run over by a train and lost two legs. Actually, he was in Kauai, and I, I know, <laughs> I know the places that he uh, he hangs out at. Um, it was so much about him, pretty much. You know, the focus was on on also on being normal. Having also he had a twin brother that was interesting. Um, and uh, his twin brother dies later, but they don't explain too much about that why. Um, and the third one was, yeah, about about everybody, about, I mean, this mother had to peel the bandages off her son who cried from the pain every time they did it, but she had to do it. And so you, um, it was so, you know, and they, they, I don't know if they could have succeeded at, at making, a, presenting the, the story in a way that emotionally it, it was at the level of the reality of, of, that, of that man's story. You know, I, I find it a little bit too... Um, disconcerting for it to be so for there to be so much discrepancy between the the style of story uh, telling the story and the reality that you have to sort of draw because uh, at first you don't even really get there you know you get there when you, it touches your heart and you're moved and you cry or you, you then you, you you realize now I see what happened to that person but um this this last documentary almost didn't achieve that, and it wasn't because they had a little a quick air a quick moment in which they show that you don't see it. So, anyways, uh, I don't know if any of you will have seen all three of these. It's a lot. <laughs> I realize that it's you know they're like an, an hour long each, but to me they they speak so much of the human condition. And, you know, when it takes you there, you just think, what are we doing while this is happening, while these people, and like these three people, there are 
thousands of people who in, 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 different, in different ways are suffering as much. And we're all caught up with, you know, incarcerating and, you know, there's like a, a lunacy in the world uh, of attacking each other and wanting to take from each other. And at the same time, there we there's children that suffer hunger for the first four years of their lives until they die. And and we are caught up in the drama of being mean to one another. So there's this 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 lunacy happening in the world. Um, but it always does have to do with with a spiritual belief because you know uh, a lot of religions basically take care of feeling better and 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 making yourself out to feel you're a better person, a kinder person who's capable of not becoming depressed or becoming uh, negative or mean or, you know, maintaining you. It's I call it the me-me religions, uh, which in reality, deep inside, behind those smiles and that copacetic-ness with uh, the universe and what have you, there's a profound selfishness where, where you can't bring any problem to any of these people because they, they just want to run away and get away from it. Um, but on the other hand, all the traditional religions, the oldest religions that are still around, um, they're all about satisfying the will and the, the directions and the judgment of some exterior, external uh, decree, decreeing will that will reward us or what have you. But I don't know any religions that teach us to take care of ourselves for what we are as a humanity that actually say, well, this is your nature. These things are your tendency. And look at what happens to you. Look at what you do with your intelligence and the things you have to deal with uh, on this planet. And, uh, you know, I realize you didn't create yourself, but how are you going to... How are you going to survive? How are you going to use this amazing capacity to escape suffering and even death, perhaps, uh, in a way that is not, uh, you know, not by like, uh, you know, <laughs> cryogenics or or uh, making yourself eternal somehow, but by actually maybe escaping the suffering of death, which is more tangible, it's more imaginable. Not necessarily drugging ourselves, but maybe uh, before death. <laughs> but maybe perhaps we can achieve a state of of consciousness, of of self morale, of morality, of purpose, of collective purpose that will give us much more peace and uh, har harmony with uh, with dying. And then we'll have the sciences too that will make it pleasant instead of painful for the body or just normal you know so it's not perhaps what we imagine and yet maybe it is true but we're not even seeing it through the way that um is realistic to our capacities we're we're thinking that the that paradise will come Later, after, after us. Ciao! Um, and that it's for when, after we die or something. And we're not really here and now owning the gift of life uh, and uh, owning the, our capacities our amazing intelligence, because it is amazing, what we the things that we can come up with. Except the problem is what we apply them towards, right? <laughs> but maybe we'll start applying them to us, to the to the, our existential condition of all of us, and think of all of us, not just 
uh, adapt ourselves to the functioning of the systems the one or two try the one or two ideas that we had for systems and I, I let it rule us let it drive us let adapt ourselves to us and if it causes half the world to be forgotten and trampled over oh well we don't seem to believe or realize that they are our events it's our instrument civilizations institutions sciences all rationale or logic is our making if it doesn't benefit everybody we can continue changing and making getting until we get it right <laughs> you know why don't we do that why don't why doesn't why doesn't humanity realize it's free to use its own intelligence to save its entire whole self as one collective population why is it does it feel it can't move it can't alter circumstances when those circumstances are constrained by our inventions by the way we've designed the world <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't put here and, and nobody said okay this is you know it wasn't god that created all our governments and institutions and religions and philosophies and sciences and and said now work with it oh well some of you you know that's tough no we made it all we made the world so what's stopping us from making it to where nobody gets hurt nobody's harmed from it why you know there's no even if we're not capable of loving that much because you know loving a whole lot all day long all the time seems like it could be possible but maybe it's not possible that doesn't mean we could still um not logically simply want to have civilization work and benefit everybody not leave anybody out or behind just you know oh look that person how we we understand everything we understand what causes people to to become transgressors of the law and want to defy society and need to prove to themselves to whatever is in their head or is outside their head we know um not to mention all the stuff that we talk about and we just dramatize like all the corruption and wars and uh, systems that don't reach and, and let people starve or be homeless you know we we make we make dramas of it instead of going and solving it <laughs> who's who's stopping us from nobody but us <laughs> nobody's like okay wait we got we got to change that because it's causing some people to not have a home or not access health care or not no because you know oh, we look for reasons to justify not changing the world not bettering the world and and nobody's making us uh uh and there're no and and those all those reasons are questionable and debatable so really our decision in seeking them is really what stands out that we we kind of don't want to be bothered and so we have a good reason why we can't change that anyways so uh what a strange day isn't it okay got it oh it's so beautiful Mm-hmm. What? What? You smell that? All right. Ciao.